This time on the Gadget Show Web TV, John's excited to get his hands on the i8910 HD phone from Samsung, Otis is messing around with my face on Animoto, and I've got the latest gadget related news. Hi and welcome to this week's Web TV. Now there have been some great smartphones released recently that have got people very excited. John's here with a look at Samsung's latest effort to keep ahead of the game. Oh, it's so shiny. I seem to have spent quite a bit of time lately trying to find the perfect smartphone and failing. Nokia's new N97 had the most features but was spoilt by its poor touchscreen, its bugs and its slow responses. The Palm Pre during the UK later this year has a great touchscreen and iPhone rivaling interface for the keyboard small it lacks basic features like a video camera. The iPhone itself is the strongest contender. In 3GS form it's brisk and there's the delightful interface, but it's still short on a few features, the improved camera isn't great, and you're stuck with A2, which where I live has appalling coverage. One phone I'd overlooked though until now was Samsung's new i8910 HD. HD standing for its ability to shoot high definition video. It's actually been around for a little while, so this isn't a first look so much as a couple of months on look. First impressions are that it's really quite a large phone, but not outrageously so. It's 120 odd millimeters in length and under 150 grams in weight, so it's not too bad in the pocket. And the appearance is dominated by this large and really very responsive touch screen. It's 3.7 inches across, um, it's 640 by 360 pixels, and because it uses OLED technology, the colors are really quite brilliant. It uses the Symbian S60 operating system, which is a bit of a surprise to find on a Samsung, and it's not, frankly, the most elegant and uh, well thought through interface in touch screen form. But the fact that the screen itself is more responsive makes it a much more acceptable experience than it is on Nokia's N97. And you've still got the uh, customizable home screen, which you can add widgets to and move them around. The number of applications available isn't exactly Apple App Store rivaling, but because it's Symbian, you do get a useful selection. I downloaded the BBC iPlayer and it installed effortlessly, as did the YouTube application, and the quality of the screen makes for excellent video watching. Actually, the sound from the built-in speakers is pretty good too for a phone. I also downloaded Google Maps and that installed fine and uh, worked very well with the excellent built-in GPS. The only slight downside there was I didn't manage to make it coordinate itself with the phone's also excellent built-in electronic compass, so the maps remained resolutely in the same direction. The music player's good, and there's an FM radio, which is important to me, and it's all played back through a 3.5mm headphone socket. It's just a pity that the socket's located under this rather fiddly flap. Web browsing's good too, although uh, when you're entering the address, you get this rather fiddly transition that's so, so typical of uh, Symbian touch. You want to use the QWERTY keyboard, you have the screen flipped around straight away and go into a sort of completely different environment to enter the address, which is kind of odd, but you can live with it. As for battery life, I think it's a bit better than most of its main rivals. I think you'll still end up charging it every day, but you'll be more confident that the battery lasts through the day than you would with an iPhone or a Palm Pre. Also, because it's uh, changeable, you can actually carry a spare as well. Mixed feelings about the camera. The 8 megapixel stills are very good, actually, for a phone. They're much better than anything you'd get on an iPhone. But the HD video wasn't that brilliant. It certainly doesn't rival anything you get on an HD camcorder. In fact, because it produces really rather large file sizes, you may be better off using the video camera on a lower setting. There is a flash, but it's only an LED one, unfortunately, not a Xenon one. So, the Samsung isn't a perfect smartphone, but it is the one I could most easily live with out of the current crop. On-demand fans rejoice because MSN Video is now available on demand. The popular MSN Video player will have over 300 hours worth of shows and is available from this week. Microsoft have said that it's extending its service by adding content from as many broadcasters and studios as possible.
The beta features material from both the BBC and all three media and includes popular UK shows Peep Show and Shameless. Programs are available as Windows Media Video and Flash formats which are compatible on both Mac and PC. The project is similar to MSN Video which currently offers short video clips including sport, music and news. Microsoft want to point out that this is a pilot scheme that will be used to gauge the popularity of the service and they may extend it to other platforms like the Xbox if it proves to be a success. They may also expand it to other countries in a similar way to Hulu who have had a great success in the US and are now branching out to the UK market. Sky have confirmed that the 3D TV service they have previously been trialling will be available at some point in 2010, making them the first broadcaster in Europe to offer the next generation of TV. Since they first showcased the 3D TV service at the end of 2008, Sky have been chomping at the bit to get it into people's living rooms as soon as the technology would allow. They're hoping to offer a broad selection of the best in 3D programming, including movies, entertainment and sport. Sky claim that their current HD subscribers will be able to use their existing HD box and will not need to upgrade their equipment. However, if your HD TV isn't 3D compatible, you will need to invest in a 3D ready TV before you can use the service. Despite most homes still having to make the jump to HD TV, Sky are confident that people will want to invest in the new technology once they've seen their 3D TV service in action. Last week on Web TV, we showed you the photo editing site Avery. What do you do with those pictures once you've made them all perfect? Well, Otis has discovered Animoto, which may hold the answer. Image slideshows. Here's my problem with most of them. You take ages picking the best photos possible for your slideshow. And then what do you get? Images coming in very slowly, then fading out very slowly. If you're lucky, one might come up from below and then break into four quarters. Oh, look. Oh, great. That one's spinning in from the corner. Do you get what I mean? They tend to be quite pedestrian and very slow. Animoto intends to change all that. Now, it's a web application that takes your photos and then puts them to the song of your choice. And then what it does is it animates these photos with some really nice transitions and they go to the rhythm of whatever song you've selected. Now, it's very easy to sign up. In fact, it's free and you can make a 15 second video for absolutely nothing. If you want to make a full length video, then that's gonna cost you a nominal fee. Here's what you do. You select your photos, you can do them straight off your computer or you can have them retrieved by an Emoto from any albums that you may have uploaded to social networking sites like Facebook, Photo Bucket, Picasa, etc., etc. Once the photographs have been uploaded and processed, you can then choose to delete some of them and you can reorder them as well. Choose your song, upload that, or you can choose one from a collection that Animoto has. Press click and there you are. A unique image slideshow like none that anybody else will have. Now what I like about Animoto is obviously it takes a lot of the stress out of trying to cut and paste the pictures into the rhythm of the song yourself. And you can share your videos with friends on the Animoto site or you can download them, email them, or you can embed them into the page of your social networking site. Go try it for yourself. But before you do, here's one I made up a little bit earlier. Come and have a look, come and have a look. Hey, I think she'll love it. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but next week we've got a first look at a very special television from Philips, so make sure you tune in. The Gadget Show is back on TV now, Monday nights from 8 on 5, and we're here with behind the scenes features, exclusive videos and reviews on our website. On top of all that, you can become a fan of the show on our official Facebook fan page and follow us on Twitter for regular updates on the new series. I'm off on holiday next week for some sun, sea and sand, but Amy from the production team has kindly agreed to step in and keep you up to date with all things Gadge. Bye for now.